Greetings everyone, this is Connor from Dagora TV, and I've just got back, literally just now, just going through the front door, from EGX Res 2017, it was a tobacco dock in London, and I've never been before, I got a press pass this year, so I dragged George, dragged George on the GNM podcast along to come with me, and... We spent a couple of days just, you know, playing pretty much every game that was there, talking to a few developers of games and everything, and getting an f- impression of really what's going to be coming onto the indie market pretty soon, and really what's coming to gaming market as well, because there was the developer session for Prey there, which we visited, uh, one for Divinity Original Sin 2 as well, which we attended as well, and we're going to be talk- I'm going to be doing a few videos about really what was said at these different things and what, what games we played and things like that. But for the first one, I wanted to talk about the top five games I played at EGX Rest. I'm going to go in depth to all the games that I played at EGX Rest, but this is really for the top five. And before we get going, I've got two honourable mentions. If, you, if any of you have watched the podcast, you know that I'm pretty hard at minimising it down to a list of a contained number. I always have like a couple I want to include and never get in there. But the two I've got for the honourable mentions is a game called Brawlout, which... It was kind of like a Smash Bros style game. It was very, very popular, especially on the Friday. Um, we played on the first day we was there, and Thursday was kind of a quieter day at the convention, a bit more of a chilled out day. So we was able to have a, go- a couple of games on it there. And yeah, we had a lot of fun playing Brawl. It was kind of a Smash Bros style game on, I think it was the Xbox One controller we was using, so I'm presuming it was on PC. And we had a lot of fun playing that. We found out that the bird is OP. Um, George was able to destroy me with that game completely, and it was very, very popular on the Friday. I think they had a tournament there as well, um, which we, uh, it was a huge queue around that, but a huge queue, probably one of the most popular games at Res this year. And the other one is Gang Beasts, and you might think, Connor, how have you not played Gang Beasts before? Come on, you go to a lot of conventions, you've been to EGX a few times now. Gang Beasts seems to be at every single goddamn convention. How have you not played it before? But for some reason, I've never played it before. I've never played Gang Beasts before. So... It was the first time I was able to give it a go, and it was a lot of fun, yeah, especially watching people play it as well around us. It was a game which, when people were watching it, they were laughing at a lot, you know, it seems like a good game that people enjoy watching, so I wanted to include it on the list because it was one of the fun, more fun games that I played at EGX. Um, and lastly, I want to say before we get into the five, I'm not including games that I've played before um, at other conventions, so I'm not going to put in games like Super Arcade Football and Ukulele and things like that. I'm just going to put in games that I have new and I haven't played before. So, uh, number five is Battalion 1944, and I actually made a vil- video about Battalion 1944 a while back now, when, when the Kickstarter was first announced, because I thought it was an interesting sounding game, um, to really see what it was going to be like, and, you know, going through what the different aspects of the Kickstarter was and what the game is going to be set, but it's a World War Two kind of close combat arena shooter. It was a 4v4 match, uh, match of what we played, and it was the Germans versus the Americans. You had the choice of one or two guns. It was definitely in an early alpha stage. Before we played the game, the developers actually took us to a corner, grouped us all up, and was like, there's going to be bugs, so just bear that in mind. Don't have to take pictures or show any gameplay, so just really... You know, keep it in sight when you're playing against. If you've come across anything, just let us know, and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, Battalion was a, it was a really fun experience. Yeah, it's, you know they've got work to do. You know, a lot of polish, especially. But I like the fact that there was you know a small amount of weapon choice. I, I don't think they should stray from that. I don't think there should be a lot of you know a lot of weapons in the game. It kind of felt a lot like CS:GO in the sense that it was more skill based than something like Call of Duty, which is very much a gear based shooter. And I felt, I, I felt like it was a lot of fun, you know, you quick into the action, there was a small, tight map um, that we played on. It was a lot of fun to play Battalion, uh, to be honest, and I, I think that, you know, it could be a game that does very well when it comes out, that they've got Square Enix publishing it as well, so I think they've got a lot of money, to, you know, to help support the game, and we'll definitely see how it does, but I hope they don't stray far from this whole tight combat, you know, a couple of weapons... Um, not a huge amount of a, a long list with the weapons. It was very, the menus, obviously, it's an early alpha build, so you know there wasn't exactly as it was going to be. But there was a list of like five or six guns, and we could only pick two in the demo that we played. And yeah, it's something that I, I want to kind of keep look, revisiting at different conventions that we go to in the future, just to see how much the game is going to come along and things like that. Because it was definitely a lot of fun. And number four is a game called Never Give Up, and I think we've all probably seen games like this on Flash games and things like that, where you know, you, you've got to get to the other end of the map and it's kind of like, you know, you die a lot and things like that. I had like a, a counter at the top right end of the screen of the total deaths that you had and the total deaths that have been at EGX res that year. 
and it was, it was something ridiculous, like 3,000 or something. And yeah, it was a game that we played the full minute demo twice, I believe, each of us, um, and we had a lot of fun playing it. Uh, it was, you know, those seven stages in what we played, um, obviously starting out easy and getting a bit hard as you go along, and it looks like a game that I could just jump on for a half an hour and, you know, just carry and just have a few attempts at and uh, make our way through. It was, um, the development team, it was a team of three people, it was a programmer and two artists that were in the team, it was talking a little bit to the developer, and they had two games there that were making simultaneously, and this one was the one I preferred, I, I, I massively preferred Never Give Up, I felt like it, it was it was quite, you had a lot of fun with it as well, with the dialogue, you know, swearing when you died and things like that, I had a lot of fun with it, and yeah, it was, it was, pretty, it was a pretty fun experience, and I think Never Give Up could be, it could be a game that really... It's something that I think a lot of people would enjoy, you know, just for a quick session, you know, not something that they're going to, have to dedicate a lot of time to for one day, but it's something that you can you know, jump on and off to every so often just to take out a few levels. And yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun and I'll definitely be keeping my eye on it as well. Number three was Nerve, and Nerve is a, it was a game that we played on VR, I believe we played it on the Oculus actually with an Xbox controller, it's coming out on PC, and I think they're coming out bringing it to PlayStation VR as well, you don't have to play it on VR, it can be a game you can just play on a normal screen, and it's a game where basically you're a, a ball where you can control your speed with a boost RT or LT, which would be the, you know, to slow you down to like motion speed to kind of get through these little traps, and you just gotta basically keep moving without dying. And there was a leaderboard up, and it was 180 kilometers, I believe, which was leading, and I got to 162. And um, apparently, according to uh, my friend George, there was a little bit of a crowd around me when I was getting, you know, towards the later end to see if I could do it. And I died at a point because I, I left it too late to turn. And it was it was a fun game. Um, it was a game that we played a couple of times actually. And um, it, it, I really liked it as well because even though it didn't really need VR at all, the VR was there was kind of like a bit of an attached on, a little bit of a gimmick to it. You know, you did, it's not a game where you're looking around a lot. It just kind of gets you more immersed into the experience. It was fun, you know, good drum and bass kind of soundtrack to it as well. I think they said that there's going to be 10 missions per stage, and there's 11 stages, so that's 110 missions. And each one of them, I think, takes about, the one that we did, it would took about 10 minutes to kind of get through. And I think we was one that was like not in the later game, but kind of like mid to late game that we was playing it on. So, uh, Nerve is something that, yeah, again, is going to be, a, a, they're projecting it to be out for 2017. And... It, it, was, it was it was an enjoyable game again. It was a lot of fun, um, but it's something again, kind of like never give up. Where it's just one of these little games you just jump onto for half an hour to an hour and just pump out a few levels. You know, this what that's kind of what I got from Res this year. There's a lot of little fun games, you know, that are popping up other than these indie games trying to be serious, trying to be really serious, trying to steal a whole lot of your time. And though, you know, there was a lot of them. You know, there was a lot of those games there. Some were really cool, like uh, there was one Attack of the Earthlings, which was announced just a couple of days before, which is kind of like trying to be an XCOM style game, but instead of you being the humans, you play as the aliens. And I thought that was a really cool idea, and it was, t it was talking through some of the mechanics that we've got in there where you can hide into boxes and take out enemies and things like that. And it was, it was, it was a fun experience, you know, and it was something that I think about XCOM fans would like because it's kind of having a, a lot of fun with that kind of genre. I think it, it definitely looks easier than what um, XCOM is, but yeah, it looks like it's going to be an enjoyable kind of game. But Nerve, to me, was definitely the best uh, VR game that we played at the show. Um, it was also good for me as well because the first time I played VR in a little while, and it's better for my eyes now because before when I played it, it was a nightmare for my eyes. I got a huge headache after I finished. I had to sit down for a little bit. It was this time I even played the game wrong because uh, if you held RT, RT down, it gave you the boost. I kept spamming RT. So I was getting the boost. I was, you kept shaking every time you pressed it, and I thought that's what was giving you the boost. I kind of didn't really, you know, I, I didn't think it was giving you the continuous boost, and it was kind of giving me a shaky cam. So even with like a shaky cam style to it right in front of my eyes, I wasn't getting motion sick, and I'm someone who gets it quite a little bit. So that was kind of cool, really good for me when it come down to VR. And I, I think Nerve is a game that yeah, I'll be keeping my eye on and to play at other conventions as well, uh, especially EGX later this year. Number two is Tacoma, which is kind of a, one of the more anticipated games at EGX this year. It was at the ID Xbox area, and there was a lot of people who were looking, who was around that. There was only one booth, one computer with it on, and there was a lot of people around that uh, computer every time we walked past it, because it was one that was kind of looking to play, and we played it late on the Friday, and Tacoma, you know, is a St Steve Gaynor's new game. It was the, it's the spiritual successor to Gone Home. It's the same studio that made Gone Home, which was very well received. And after the little demo that we played, we I played about 10 minutes of it, of um, basically 
You're trying to find out what happened on the ship. Um, a disaster went down. It seems like an explosion. Some of the video files were going to get corrupted midway through their process. You re you rewinding them and going to different points of the area to see what was going to be happening and the, what happened with the people at the time with the AI and everything. And really kind of trying to find out what went down on the ship. And it looks like a lot of fun to me. Um, um, it got me really interested in the story and I kind of didn't really want it to end. It was kind of like an, a linear kind of style as well, looking around, picking up clues and everything. Kind of a similar style to Gone Home. It was kind of everything I wanted it to be, so that's why it made the list. It was why I expected it to be as well. And yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to get, getting that, to, to see that come back and, you know, really get a game of it. Because... It's not a game I don't think I'm going to play a demo again because I don't want to spoil too much of it for me. It was just, I got enough, I saw what I needed to see and I was like, yes, I'm going to be ready for this when it comes out and I'm looking forward to seeing it. And at number one is a game that's in open beta on Steam and it's in, and it's called Paladins and a lot of people have been giving crap in this game for it being kind of like an Overwatch clone and it's definitely, you can see, is you know inspired by a lot of Team Fortress 2 and a lot of Overwatch's um, ideologies and everything with its characters and everything like that and its game modes and everything. But... I did actually really like Paladins, and I think it did enough different from Overwatch to stand on its own. The first thing is that you get credits, kind of like in a MOBA-style game, where you, when you go back to the home, kind of like your home base where you respawn and everything, you're able to buy a new power-up, so you can buy like a horse to get you back to the action quicker, you can buy the, the way to get more damage to heal yourself when you've got an elimination and things like that. Cool different like aspects to improve your character, and I think that's a real big game-changer from Overwatch, personally, because... I think that adds a whole new tactic to the game that really do change it. And you know, if you're smart enough to pick, you know, your upgrades and you know for the way that the game's going and which aspects to buy, you can really, you know, really turn the game around quite quickly. And I thought that was like really cool. It does really punish the idea of changing the character um, a lot, which is kind of what Overwatch is fun at. You know, keep changing the character. You know, when you get a bit bored of it in the game or you feel like it's going to change, you can still change, obviously, but. You kind of want to stick with the way you go, but you can kind of just change the ideology of your ca of your character with the things that you purchased. And I did really well at the game as well. I had a lot of fun with it. It's definitely a game where it's sent to getting a lot more kills than what Overwatch is. You know, like um, Overwatch is kind of like the battle, but kind of gently pushing back and pushing against when you, especially when you're pushing the payload and eventually breaking through after a few kills. This is a game where you know people are dying a lot and getting back to the action quick. You know, it was. Uh, a game where it was really destined to kind of really get get to the action a lot quicker than Overwatch is, which is might sound a bit weird because Overwatch is virtually all about that action point. But I felt, I felt Paladins did it in a unique way, and it's got that cool, more Disney-like art style um, than Overwatch. Um, Overwatch does look graphically better, in my opinion, but it, it does do enough differently for Paladins to stand on its own. It's a game I'm actually downloading right now to be able to play um, once I'm done recording this once I'm done recording this video because I want to give it a couple more games of it because I thought it was a lot of fun and Paladin is definitely my number one. It's the most fun game I had there. Um, and I'm really looking forward to kind of really get into the game a bit more and see if it can last a lot for me and get the people who I play Overwatch with to give it a go because it could do... It's adding to that market which is getting a lot pop more popular now. These kind of like really team heavy oriented... You know, kind of fun-loving shooters, if you know what I mean. It's not serious like a Call of Duty or a Battlefield. You know, it's kind of like cool, quirky characters get together in a team and try and push a payload. And it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So thanks all for watching this video. And please let me know if you want what videos you want me to do on EGX Res um, now. Because I've got a lot there. If you want me to do a video on Prey, I can do a video on that dev session in Divinity Original Sin. You can also watch those dev sessions as well online. Uh, if you want me to talk about some of the, the other games that I played at EGX as well. Um, I'd be happy to do that. Um, but please leave a comment. If you was there, let me know if you enjoyed the show at EGX Res. I thought it was a really good co uh, convention. Really chill, back, laid back convention. Different to EGX Res, uh, to normal EGX, sorry, where, you know, there's a lot of loud music, a lot of, you know, a lot of long cues. You know, it was one where you can just casually just stroll around and play a few games. And I thought that was enjoyable, a lot of fun. It was, you know, it was a pretty sweet convention. Um, looking forward to going back to, to it next year. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. Please leave a comment. Follow me on Twitter as well at Degoracy. And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.